Okay, before we jump in, a quick heads up. This special explainer was actually researched and put together by GPT-5 Deep Research, and it's fully AI generated. Pretty wild, huh? All right, let's get into it. The launch of OpenAI's GPT-5, it was supposed to be this huge landmark moment for AI. But as soon as it landed, the internet basically split right down the middle. You had people on one side celebrating its incredible new powers, and on the other, people were calling it a massive step backward. So how could one single product be both a revolution and a regression? Let's break it all down. OpenAI's leadership, well, they weren't exactly subtle about the hype. I mean, you have CEO Sam Altman making this comparison, saying the jump from GPT-4 to 5 is like when the iPhone went to a retina display. Now, that's not just slick marketing. That's a direct promise. A promise of a revolutionary leap in how sharp, clear, and useful this thing would be. The message was loud and clear. This isn't just another update. It's a total transformation. And yet, that incredible promise just slammed into a wall of user frustration. Almost immediately after launch, you see this Reddit thread, GPT-5 is horrible, just skyrocketing to the top of the site with thousands of upvotes. And that right there, that's the core of the story we're unpacking today. This huge disconnect between the hype and what people actually experienced. So to really get why there was a backlash, first we have to understand the promise they were making. OpenAI wasn't just talking about a small improvement. No, they were selling a truly monumental leap. Sam Altman even said using GPT-5 would feel like talking to a PhD-level expert on any subject you could think of. That's a massive claim compared to the older models that felt more like a really smart, but sometimes wrong, college student. And they didn't stop there. They went even bigger, framing GPT-5 as this major milestone on the journey to artificial general intelligence, AGI. So in their telling, this wasn't just about making a better chatbot. This was about building the literal future of intelligence. When you set the stakes that high, well, the expectations are going to be through the roof. Okay, so let's push all that hype to the side for a second and look at the actual product. Because, you know, buried under all the noise and the complaints, GPT-5 did bring some seriously impressive new features to the table. Things that really did push the technology forward. First up is something that sounds like it's straight out of science fiction, vibe coding. The idea here is that GPT-5 is so good at programming that it can create, and I'm quoting OpenAI here, good software on demand. They actually showed a live demo where it built a fully functional, interactive web app for learning languages in about a minute. One minute. All from just a simple text description. I mean, that's a potential game changer for turning ideas into real things without ever touching a line of code. And then there's the sheer size of its brain, so to speak. GPT-5 has a context window of 400,000 tokens. That is a massive jump from GPT-4's 32,000. So what does that actually mean for you? It means it can read and analyze hundreds of pages of information all at once. Imagine feeding it an entire book, a huge legal document, or a whole software project in a single prompt. Now, this brings us to one of the biggest problems in AI, reliability. We've all seen these models hallucinate, you know, just completely make stuff up. Well, take a look at these numbers. On a really tough medical knowledge test, the older model's error rate was more than 20%. With GPT-5, that rate dropped, or rather plummeted, to just 1.6%. That is a drastic, drastic improvement in being factual. And it's absolutely vital for fields like medicine or law, where being wrong is not an option. So how does it do all this? Well, under the hood, GPT-5 has this new system called adaptive reasoning. See, it's not just one single giant model anymore. It's more like a team of models. When you ask a simple question, a fast, lightweight model gives you a quick answer. But, and this is the cool part, if you throw a really complex problem at it, an intelligent router kicks in, calls up a much more powerful submodel, and actually spends more computing power to think harder before it answers. It literally adapts its effort to how hard the problem is. So, with all these incredible, powerful upgrades, why on earth was there such a firestorm of criticism? This is where the story gets really complicated, and it all comes down to the day-to-day -day experience of the average user, especially the ones paying for ChatGPT+. Let's just start with how OpenAI pitched it. They were totally confident, calling it their smartest, fastest, most useful model yet. The message was simple, 
everything about this is better. It's a clear upgrade. No question. But that is not what a lot of people felt. This quote from a Reddit user just captures that feeling perfectly. It's like my chat GBT suffered a severe brain injury. They weren't experiencing a smarter, better tool. To them, it felt like their trusted assistant had been fundamentally broken. And that disconnect is really the heart of the whole controversy. So what was really driving people crazy? It pretty much boils down to these three things. First, just the perceived quality. Tons of users felt the answers were suddenly shorter, blander, less creative, even dumber. Second, OpenAI got rid of the option to use older GPT-4 models, which really angered power users who had specific workflows built around them. And third, and this was a big one, paying subscribers got hit with this new, very restrictive message limit on the most powerful thinking mode. So it felt like they were paying for a service that just got downgraded. Okay, so let's zoom out a bit. This whole GPT-5 launch, it wasn't just about one company or one product. It was a huge signal that reveals a really fundamental shift in where the entire AI industry is going. Because the leap from GPT-4 to 5 wasn't this mind-blowing exponential jump everyone expected. It sparked a really critical question across the tech world. Is the golden age of rapid AI improvement over? Are we hitting a wall? Some experts definitely saw this launch as proof that we're hitting a point of diminishing returns. But the real answer is probably a little more nuanced. Progress isn't really slowing down, it's evolving. The old strategy was just make the models bigger, throw more data at them, no matter what it costs. But now the game has changed. The focus has pivoted away from just raw scaling. You can see the industry's new direction right here. The cutting edge isn't just about being the smartest anymore. It's about real world usefulness, about being efficient, about being reliable. It's about creating AI that can actually do things for you. They call this agentic capabilities. And that is exactly what GPT-5 seems to be optimized for even if it meant the general wow factor wasn't as big this time around. And you can see this specialization happening everywhere. The competition is incredibly fierce, and it's not a one-horse race. GPT-5 might be the king of coding and using tools right now, but Anthropic's Claude is famous for its stable, coherent conversations. Google's Gemini is a powerhouse at integrating different types of media, and XAI's Grok is built for real-time knowledge. There isn't one best model anymore. There are different leaders for different jobs. This really sums up the whole shift perfectly. The old race was a brute force fight for raw intelligence. Who could get the highest score on a test? The new race is a much more sophisticated competition to build practical, useful tools that actually work in the real world. It's a fundamental move from the lab into your life. And all of this leaves us with one final big question. As AI moves from this race for raw smarts to a race for real-world utility, who's going to win? The ultimate victors probably won't be the companies with the highest benchmark scores. They'll be the ones who can translate all that intelligence into reliable, accessible tools that fundamentally change how we all work, create, and live. The race for raw intelligence might be shifting gears, but the race for true usefulness? That is just getting started.